let me narrate for you all a short story um i expect you guys to listen to the story uh, understand it and at the end of the story you guys have to tell me the moral of it okay so the story goes like this there was once a professor who uh, had informed the students that there will be a surprise test for the students for all the class and the test was surprise so the date was announced students started preparing for the test and um finally the date came the professor entered the classroom and told that today is the test so the students uh, prepare, uh, got themselves uh, ready for the for writing the exam he the professor distributed the question paper by placing the questions upside down that is uh, underneath and once the bell rang the students overturned the question paper and they were shocked to see what they saw in the question in the paper it was not the questions they saw just a small black dot at the south left corner of the paper now they were confused in what they will write so the professor after seeing at the confused faces of these students he just told them uh, write what you guys see in the question paper so they did the same thing they whatever they observed in the question paper they wrote it down at the end of the class the bell rang professor collected the question paper and he started to read those questions those answers i mean he collected the answer sheets and he started to read those answers aloud and after reading those answers he concluded that most of the students they focused on the black dot which was in the in the uh, in the question paper there was the rest space which was white they didn't write anything about that some wrote about the uh, color of the dot how thick it was what where was its placement etc etc uh, none of them wrote about the the remaining part of the paper so guys that was the story now anyone would like to unmute and tell me what is what was the moral of it most of the time uh, every one of us uh, look at the what one mistake which like yeah whatever we do and uh, whatever like if if there's so much good we don't focus on that but that one wrong thing we focus on that something like that yes that is that is the actual moral of the story we are not optimistic that's correct so the topic for my talk is an attitude of gratitude because uh, we always focus on that small dot which is the which is the wrong, uh, wrong things which has happened in our lives and uh, the rest part the beautiful part the beautiful paper which nothing was written on it in has it signifies a beautiful lives and we rarely talk about that so guys i will just give you all 20 seconds get up from your seats uh go collect a question collect a sheet of paper pencil pen pencil or pen and ruler and come back just 20 seconds okay guys i, I hope you all are ready with the um uh, with the with the stationaries which i told you all so now we just make two columns so the first column on the heading of the right the things which uh, make you happy and on the second column write the heading the things which uh, robs your peace that is uh, makes you lose your happiness on the first column just remember those things which makes you feel happy it can be your family it can be this time of community it can be uh, spending time with your friends family uh, relatives it can be the good education which we have protecting ourselves from the god has protected us from the pandemic and so many other uh, things which we are blessed with just make a list of those things
I hope you all are done with that. And on the second column, now shift to the second column, write those things which makes you lose your peace. It can be the present time exams which are going on. It can be no peace in a family. It can be um, like various other things like uh, maybe you must have had a conflict or maybe you'll have lost something and you'll have tensed about it. Various things that uh, makes you lose happiness. So now after writing these two columns, just uh, go through it and make and see which column is the longest, whether it is the uh, column with the right things, which you are blessed with, or the columns which you are uh, having trouble with things. And I guess surely it should be the column which we are blessed with. Uh, this signifies that we have an attitude of gratitude in ourselves, but if it is not, if it is the other column, then we need to inculcate. We don't have it, but we need to inculcate this gratitude in ourselves. So let us move to the next slide. Now we have the scripture verse in front of us on our screens. I would ask you all to not to unmute, but read it along with me. Psalm 100 verse 1 to 5 says, Sing to the Lord all the world. Worship the Lord with joy. Come before him with happy songs. Acknowledge that the Lord is good. He made us and we belong to him. We are his people. We are his flock. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into its courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise him. The Lord is good. His love is eternal. His faithfulness lasts forever. So this uh, passage which we, let, we read from Psalm 100, King David, who wrote the psalm, he tells us that we need to be grateful for all things. And it tells us the reasons also. Because he made us. We belong to him. He is our protector. We are his flock. And, we, and often in the church, when we go to church, we often hear this entrance hymn. Enter his gates with thanksgiving in your hearts. Enter his courts with praise. It's such a beautiful hymn, right? And we need to give thanks to him always as we enter his uh, house. Let us uh, go to the next slide. Now in this scripture verse, St. Paul in uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16 to 18 says, be joyful always, pray at all times. Thankful, be thankful in all circumstances, because this is what God wants in you, from you, in your life, in union with Christ Jesus. Saint Paul tells us that we need to be joyful at all times, pray unceasingly, and this is not the kind of prayer which, like, we need to be always having our eyes closed and hands joined. But it's a new lifestyle which we need to inculcate. Uh, next slide, please. Why is it hard to be grateful in the midst of suffering? It is, it is hard, right? And speaking about my experience, uh, during exam time, I, uh, exam pressure will be in my head and I don't, and I don't feel like uh, speaking to anyone, like parents, will be asking why, what has happened to this guy? And I'll say, I won't be able to communicate. So I remember this event that this thing which happened in, when I was in class nine. When I was in class nine and uh, uh, my first semester uh, exam, the midterm exam, which we have, the first exam was history. And though I like history because it, it, it has so much of suspense in it, but uh, when it comes to mugging up for exams, that is a bit, 
different story. So uh, it was the previous night before the exam, and um, I was fully tense about the exam. I suddenly started crying because I couldn't. I thought I won't. I won't be able to pass. I started crying. I told my parents, my mom, and she told me just spend some time in prayer and then uh, continue to study. And yeah, I've experienced this. It is grateful to be hard. It is difficult to be hard and to be grateful in the midst of suffering. But if you look in the lives of those philosophers, those uh, religious writers, those uh, from, from the Bible, if you take the example of Job, they all went through sufferings, but they had, they came out of those sufferings with appreciation. Now, if a person has, who has a dream of uh, running a race and he feels that I'm not having one leg, if he feels like that, then he won't be able to achieve anything. But if he realizes that at least I, I have one more leg, that will make a big difference. So, and he needs to be grateful of that. So now let us, uh, next slide. So now let us go to the second part of my talk. How can we practice an attitude of gratitude? There are three main steps. The first one, continue to offer prayers to God. Second is count your blessings. And the third is complete surrender. So the first one, continue to offer your prayers to God. If we see in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16 to 18, can we go back to the verse? The next slide. Be joyful always. Pray at all times. As I told you earlier, St. Paul doesn't mention here to always close your eyes, join your hands, kneel down and pray. But he extels here of a new lifestyle. Whatever you do, do it in a prayerful manner. And that is what pray without ceasing. Whatever you do, even if you're walking the road, just have the feeling of prayer in yourself. And uh, always be prayerful. The second one comes, pray. prayer is our communication with the Lord. When we pray, we are having a direct conversation with him. We already heard the uh, talk which was given last time by Jean about prayer, the importance of prayer. And prayer is a communication which we are directly communicating with. Even if we say a family prayers on the church, we can close our eyes and we can just think that nobody is here, only it's God, and we can just communicate, pray, pray with Him. And the third comes practice humility. Now, what is humility? Humility is a state or a quality of being humble. So when we pray, we need to be humble. We need to Acknowledge that we are in front of someone who is much greater than us, who, and without him, we are nothing. So we need to have that attitude of humility in us. Now, what we have and what we are is not because of uh, our own effort, but because of God's grace. Now, let me narrate to you one short story. Just listen to it. We can narrate, we can relate that to our personal lives. There was once this couple, uh, the couple, both husband and wife, they were well educated. The wife was a housewife and the uh, husband was a, uh, he was working in a good office. The wife realized that since she is very educated and all, why she is only doing the housework. So she prays for a good job and she gets a good job. After getting a good job, she realizes that uh, they are living in a small house just a one room house and that is not um, that is not that space is not enough for them to uh, live to continue their family life so she prays for a bigger house and god blesses them with the bigger house and they are both are happy after that she feels that they need to start a family they need to have children and so she prays for having children and she gets pregnant. She has a child. After having a child, uh, when the child cries and all, she gets irritated and she has to concentrate on her, on her office work and all. 
so she real she again starts complaining to god why this all problems are coming to me and then the husband goes and tells her that why are you so much upset she tells she's having these all problems and she's telling and she's blaming god the husband says why do you blame god because whenever you asked anything in prayer god has always granted you you asked for a job he gave you a job you asked for a new house he gave you a new new house you asked for a new for starting a family he blessed us with a child so that is why well, instead of continuing blaming with him we can uh have that feeling of thankfulness because each time we come before him instead of just saying things which we need our supplications we can just have we can just say thank you for answering our prayers thank you for being grateful next let us go to the second topic count your blessings now on your slide you can see this great saint saint joseph mary escriva and what he says in this quote get used to lifting your heart to god in acts of thanksgiving many times a day because he gives you this that because you have been despised because you haven't what you need or because you have thank him for everything because everything is good yes dear friends we need to thank him for everything because he blesses us with so many things and those things may be those which we do not have and also those which we have and he continues to bless us with that we need to be thankful as saint jose mary escriva says a lot of negativity may come in our lives but despite all these blessings from god is will be greater than these challenges if we practice an attitude of gratitude uh can we move to the next slide now you can see this uh, guy in the picture i guess many of you all must have already seen him or at least heard of him he's nick wojcik and something wrong went in happened in this mother's womb when he came out he was without arms without legs and in his school he should be bullied a lot and one time a janitor told him that you will be a, a successful uh, speaker he applied for speaking jobs and 52 times he was rejected the 53rd, 53rd time he was said yes and he got to deliver a talk in front of five i mean 10 people for 5 minutes uh, he was devastated because the only 10 people for 5 minutes that's how can he move forward but this was just a start then he got started to get more offers and now he has delivered over 300 talks in so many places in the world and many of them often ask him this question how do i manage how do you manage to be happy despite having no arms no legs and nick replies uh i have a choice i can be angry or i can be angry i think your network is really bad and um so we need to uh be, have an attitude of gratitude we need to be thankful just like nick he was always you see his videos he is always enjoying himself and he is always grateful for the life he has we need to have this kind of attitude from him uh now let us go to the next slide so the third top topic that under how we practice this an attitude of gratitude comes complete surrender 
And what do you mean by complete surrender? If you see this picture in the um, on your screens, the man is standing in front of the cross. He his hands are wide open, and he's completely surrendering in front of the Lord. So we need to surrender ourselves because by surrendering our problems to Him, it can be solved. Can we go to the next slide? As this quote rightly says, let God have your life because He can do more with it than you can. We always, whenever we are in a hurry, we always take decisions fast and we go about with the decision. But and we don't sometimes have time to pray and surrender. But we need to at least say these last words: "I surrender all to you." And we need to surrender ourselves to God because. rightly he can do much more things than we can every day is a new opportunity in our lives to surrender our lives to him in every challenge we face god is preparing our hearts we move to the next as you can see saint father pio in this picture he was a person who had so much of sufferings in his life um he bore the stigmata for those who don't know who what is the stigmata it is the wounds of christ that is two on the palms two on the feet and one at the side and he was and he bore this wounds throughout his priesthood journey till the very end he was always attacked by demons and he had lot of sufferings but even he says he acknowledges that god's love is greater than this he says that the greater your sufferings are the greater is god's love for you and that is exactly true because how much sufferings we take god's love is even more greater i remember our tito justin sharing this uh, story life story of uh, achna george who is who died of cancer and there was one line uh says that which she says that give me more sufferings and she truly experienced god's love in those sufferings we also need to our as mfc youth uh, we need to pray so that we develop this attitude of gratitude so that our hearts will always be full and full of thankfulness and every and we will always be able to say thank you lord and i surrender to lord now guys let us listen to this life story from one of our uh one of our limitless participant over to viola okay good afternoon you all i hope my voice is audible it is right okay fine because i don't know if my network you know gets disturbed because i'm not in my home uh so yeah praise be to god to all the good things that happened to me till date there are so many miracles happen in my life okay and uh, i'm just confused which one to which one to choose or you know which one to share with you all so i'll tell you a recent miracle happened in my life in the month of december okay so i'm um, as you all know i'm the act, you know like active member of icym okay so <laughs> yeah i can see dion smiling uh, yeah so basically what happened was uh, usually people join when they are 18 years old and even i did the same i joined when i was 18 now i am 19 okay so i didn't have any post in my you know like a unit i mean a church i i got the post of president in my varado i took it okay and then you know when in varado you get to coordinate with dicis right so what happened is i get excited okay with anything is like you know when the, they give me responsibilities i'll be over excited i i do it like you know i fulfill the responsibility which is given to me so what happened was i was very active in diocese only four months i worked as a president okay the director of my diocese you know just uh, saw my enthusiasm and you know he chose me i mean he nominated me for the regional representative i mean girl regional representative post i didn't even know what regional was but then he gave me father give me right so i was like okay father i'll take it so very happy i was very happy you know no one gets that post uh, in such a young age so you know like i was very happy and excited uh, you know but what happened was 
in the committee right everyone were for me okay like we were like a family we were very close but when i got nominated for regional everyone went against me okay everyone went against me and that's when i i felt very lonely and you know like i didn't have anyone for me like you know they were against ki viola shouldn't get the regional post because she's not experienced she's just 19 there are many people of other ages like 23 24 they should get the post i was like it's okay god's plan so one day director called me and he was like see viola so many things are happening around you know it right yeah father before that i had gone to bangalore i took oath i came back okay and then uh, he told uh, i think we will have to take your post back i was like it's okay father god's plan uh, if god doesn't want to me to be in the post it's okay totally fine uh, bishop uh, the director discussed with the bishop and he asked what happened she told god's plan so obviously she is not you know she is okay if the post is not there so what happened was a day came you know like uh, where they had to choose whether i should be the regional or i shouldn't be the regional before that i had surrendered everything to god okay i had prayed to god ki you know you have given me the post i don't know for what but you have given the me the post because you trusted in me and now the post is going i don't even bother because i have my president and at that time i joined mfc youth as well so you know i thought i can showcase my talent everywhere so you know being in regional doesn't mean ki you know like that is the only thing for you no i have many other places as well you know so i was not even bothered okay like i was so chill so the day came where they had to choose the regional or uh, i mean or you know like accept me or not accept me so what happened was people who were against me i don't know how everyone were for for me except two people that was like a miracle okay because they didn't want me to be the regional and all of a sudden they're like viola we want you as a regional representative so you know uh, i got you know really shocked and that is when you know i i told god ki you know you are genius you you gave me the post so many things happened no see what happened was when the post went i was very challenging okay i got the challenge i got the courage to face people i got i got to know how people change i got to know everything like um, not everyone will remain for you till end because you know like everyone will come will go no one is permanent so that is what i learned from this miracle and i praise god i thank god you know for trusting in me and believing in me i am truly grateful you know for all the good things happening to me and so that i can serve in the kingdom of christ yeah praise be to god yeah thanks you all for that wonderful testimony that you shared it was really inspiring and from this we understand that how you surrender your life to god in spite of your troubles troubles that god is really genius <laughs> yeah he is so from this we understand in spite of your uh, troubles that you had you surrendered it to god and you prayed and god did answer so guys let us have a recap of what we what i told you the three things um how can we practice an attitude of gratitude first thing comes continue to offer your prayers to god second and not only offer your prayers but even be thankful for what you receive through those prayers second uh, count your blessings we often sing this hymn count your blessings name them one by one and you shall see what the lord has done the so counting your blessings is important and the third comes complete surrender that is also called humility which i told before it's complete humbling yourself surrendering your problems to god telling your supplications to him so now let us move to the last part of my talk and that is having an attitude that is having a gratitude journal now uh, what is a gratitude journal A gratitude journal is basically maintaining a book, or you can maintain a paper or anything, and in that you can write about those good things which happened in your life for which you are grateful for. You can uh, write it like 
15 minutes per day or you can keep it for three times a week and so you can just write about those things which make you feel happy not about like every day you get up from the morning you see the sunrise and you are thankful for that that is normal but write about those specific things and by writing up 